Hey, what's going on, guys? Bradrick here. I uh, want to do, I'm going to try to make this a quick video, just a quick overview on like some exploration, uh, theorizing, or ideas, and how you can make money with exploration. Um, we are all in agreement exploration is not in the best of places. It's, uh, it can be a bit annoying at times. It's a whole chance thing, and there's a huge debate on whether or not you can make it from exploration right um so if you guys keep up with some of my writing on reddit uh you'll know that i am a small ship pilot and i am a big enthusiast of smaller ships i play a weird kind of out of you know out in the woods kind of play style um don't really like getting in the large ships and riding and all of that and my reason for that is um i just i just like them you know, I like being a tackle pilot. I like uh, going fast. Uh, it's it's exhilarating. It's it's just more fun for me personally, right? Um, and I'm a I'm a I'm a big uh, underdog kind of guy, uh, so I like the sh the stuff that <laughs> doesn't uh, get used often, and I like to try to theorize how to make it good and you know play that way. But today I want to go over how you kind of actually make isk with uh, exploration and just small ship kind of piloting. I am uh, looking at my stuff that I have in Jita currently that can be put on sale on the market. I make blueprints, 554 and reverse engineering for all four empires. Uh, that's the base empires. Um, so Galente, Amar, uh, Mimitar, and uh, Kaldari. And so what I do with exploration is the relic and data sites. You find them and you can get data cores and blueprints and other types of materials from that and i take those materials from that stuff and i go ahead and make the blueprints doing reverse engineering and um i make rigs as well when i find blueprints for different types of rigs and this is kind of the stuff i have up in jita right now i have stuff in other areas that i've been you know using and making all over the place but this is the stuff i have that i can sell on the market and a lot of it does move um, so let's go in here. Now, here is the weird thing. And someone can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't honestly know. I've heard that this is the case. When you look at this, the market estimation here is the estimation for what has sold previously. Whereas... When you click on here, the price could have definitely went up. So when you go to the market, you don't just sell items. That's foolish. You don't just hit the sell button. A lot of guys do that, and I'll show you why you don't do that in a second. And this is probably why a lot of guys feel like they don't necessarily make a lot of isk from this playstyle, right? That's probably why you don't want to just hit the sell now button. This is on a lot of items, especially blueprints, especially smaller items. Guys don't really pay attention. They do gate camps and stuff. I know that play style. I play that play style. You get items from like destroying haulers or catching ships. And you'll go and you'll do what's called a Jita dump. Or you'll dump it all in the market. You make whatever you make. You get out of there. You're trying to go fast. You don't really want to spend the time of your online time on the market doing this this is a play style marketeers do you're not even big into this but if you just pay attention and take the time to sell your items individually you'll avoid this this is 33 isk for a blueprint that's worth currently 10 million isk all right so okay that's not a lot of isk yada 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 if you can it, it, like if you do like I do and you sell a bunch of these or you have a bunch of these on the market, guys will buy them in bulk. Also, the good way to sell them is guys will fill orders at ITCs out in no sec as well. And sometimes you'll click on there and you'll see that. So you have to be vigilant about checking and you can fly those out and fill those orders. And no sec orders, more often than not, are actually much higher than Jita or orders when they buy stuff because they know it's harder to get stuff out there. People don't really want to go. In order to get people to bring you stuff in no sec on a market order, you have to be, most of the time, you have to be higher priced than the Jita price. Like, for instance, a lot of rigs really sell. Blueprints, not so much, but rigs are really, 
you know, on the market and a lot of ITCs because guys just can't find them or can't get them. There's a market for this stuff. Um, I know insurance hurts all sales, all industry. I know that. We, we're not here to debate in, uh, insurance today or industry for that matter. This is just a particular type of industry that I personally do that it it's works for me because I, I, you know, I don't fly large ships. So this is good. It's comparative. It's very comparable comparatively to guys who rat riders make way more isk way more is if you just look at the numbers they make way more gross is but their net isn't that great you see a lot of players complaining that they can't afford a lot of stuff because while they're ratting a crap ton their ships also cost a crap ton it costs them way more to stockpile than it's going to cost any small ship player with a small ship play style i can stockpile all of my ships, even the most expensive of, you know, cruisers or whatever, I can, I can, I can work on stockpiling that a lot quicker than guys can work on stockpiling, say, T10 rocks, right? Um, so not to get into a tangent about that, but you want to pay attention to this stuff when you're bringing stuff to the market, especially like, you know, mods, rigs, stuff like that, and just kind of look at what prices actually are versus what they may sell for if you just hit the the button right if you just go to the market and you just dump this guy will get you and this is on here a lot this is on here a lot meaning it works <laughs> some guys go dump their blueprints and thinking it's not a value and this guy's going to take that stuff and he's going to sell it for the actual value because he's paying attention and he's actually making x from this this is on a lot of different ships uh, of blueprints um, uh, you click on these blueprints, um, almost nine times out of 10, this guy's going to get you. He's getting you. And it's just because a lot, of, a lot of players don't pay attention. A lot of players don't notice in the beginning of the game. Um, they run across, they kill a ship, they kill a hauler and, or, or a frigate, or some of this stuff might be in there and they just taking this stuff to Jita cause they got to make some is to buy another ship and they're not paying attention and they've been sold you know, 50 Tornado 2 blueprints for 33 is when their actual value is a lot higher. Um, so just pay attention to that stuff. And uh, if you're into exploration, it's, it's a big deal for you to pay attention to it because this is how you make your risk. Uh, exploration is not like ratting. Ratting, the uh, Concord pays you every time you kill something. You kill ships, you get a you get a bounty tick. It goes automatically to your wallet. It's the easiest way to make ISK in the game, and the, and it's also the most lucrative because you can just do it on mass, right? With exploration, uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, so you have to gather everything and then make it. So you have to have the exploration skills, which I do. Five five four hacking. Uh, Okay, yeah, got it. Five five four hacking and five five four exploration skills. You have to have those, and then you have to have the blueprint making skills, which is reverse engineering. I have those five five four for all four empires, right? Uh, some more skills you have to have is whatever ship skills you're using and your build, of course. Um, whatever one you want to use, whether that's an interceptor, whether that's a Estero, whether that's a ex exploration frigate. Uh, the T-10 Explorer frigates, uh, which are actually good for a, a number of different reasons. Um, if you're just trying to, you know, lazily explore, you're not really putting much into it, you can get an Interceptor and do that. The biggest price on setting up for Interceptor is the mid-slot modules for actually finding and hacking stuff. So the scanners, the blue scanner that you need, and the... Um, the other two modules for hacking, right? The Relic and Data modules for hacking. Outside of that, you can almost do it with just about any ship, honestly. And there's rigs to help you get better numbers. You can do it in low sec. You can do it in high sec, actually. Um, but low sec, most definitely, and no sec, where it's a bit more dangerous because of uh, bubble camps, right? Interdiction. So um, using a t10 explorer you can do it i have asteros I, have, I think i have more than one astero now i have a couple um and i have a couple of i have a bunch of blueprints for uh t10 explorers and the ships themselves and i use them for a various amount of reasons for looting and stealing and holding a bunch of gear and slipping gate camps get good at slipping gate camps 
if you want to use particular ships and you're not using an interceptor, get good at looking at great camps. I now, knock on wood, rarely get caught in a great camp. Um, and I fly all over the place. Um, but you can use this stuff to make these blueprints and you can sell these blueprints on the market. And what you'll find when you do this a lot is you'll actually find decent value for stuff. There is again, you will get you um, for certain items that are not on the market. And what I do, you see a lot of people do this, right? They just, they go just under the guy ahead of them. They undercut and they undercut and they undercut. And what that does over time is it kind of drives the price down for certain items. It's a way to do this to where you still get the value for your items. Because if you're buying stuff to make these on the market, because a lot of guys don't explore, they just buy the materials and then they make stuff, right? If you're buying stuff to make these items and then sell, you'll cut into your own price doing that technique, right? If you're making stuff from scratch, then everything is profit. And your only goal is to make profit. But if you're buying items to make stuff, this will cut into your profit. Just going, just clicking on here to sell this, right? So he's at 6487. And I just say, I do this. And I just do this. Or I just get I just get right up under him, right? He's at 6487, and I go 6486. And I do that, right? I put that on the market. Yeah, I undercutted that guy just by a little bit. My items will sell first because they're going to be lower on the on the on the sheet, right? But did I make isk is the question? Did I did I just make that number six four eight six nine nine nine, and it costed me five million in, in in materials to make that blueprint? Then did I really make a lot of isk? That's the question. So you make that number if you found everything free and it just cost you time in exploration. You don't make that number if you bought everything on the market and then you undercut not only those guys, but yourself by going down, right? So a lot of times what you can do um, instead in order to make your actual isk, and if I can find one here, you know, that's very popular. And that's something you have to weigh too, the popularity of the ship. Because a lot of times the prices will be low because it's so many because everybody's using that particular ship. Like Hurricane Logistics is one. Um, the Raven sometimes is one. Right now, probably the Tornadoes uh, are, are popular. The Typhoons are popular. The Rocks are definitely popular. Um, so ships like that, where they're super popular, there'll be a ton of blueprints. And everyone's undercutting everybody. Just trying to hurry up and make some is. And you'll see the price go down lower than what it might, sh than what it probably should be, right? Uh, a lot of times you can find the off type ships that haven't really sold a lot, but they are ships that guys use, right? So, like here, if I see two, well, it's four of these on the market total, right? There he is. He'll get you, right? <laughs> There's four of these on the market for this price, right? What I might do, right? So I'm looking at roughly five million per. Is I'll go ahead and I'll help the market out. I have eight of these. I'll do this. And this is just me. I'm not telling everybody else to do this. I'll do this. Right? It cost me 1.1 million to make that uh, sale, to put it on the market, right? And uh, I went above the price that was actually there, correct? What that'll do is guys buying that blueprint will see that the, those old prices are now the lower prices. They'll hurry up and buy those soon that my, my items will be the only thing on the market. What that does is it actually raises the value because those first items will get bought because people look at that and they say, oh, well, that's the cheapest price and they'll, they'll, they'll go for it. Some people do. Some people say, nah, I'll wait. And it just depends on how their personal economy works. Some people can't wait. Some people can't. Some people need to build a ship right now. Doctrine just changed. Boom, they need to buy all of these. So this is a stockpiling game. This is a economic game. This is a savings game. This is 
you don't put all your eggs in one basket. This is not fast. It's, this is just consistent. It's, right? By the time I take the time to put all of the rigs and all of the blueprints that I want to sell in Jita on the market, right? And I just go play the game. I go explore and I go build and I go stockpile and I go get in fights and I go get camp and I go do things. And this stuff over time, over about the six day period, which the items stay on the market, it, most of it will be gone, to be completely honest. Most of it will be gone. Really, does anything ever come back? It does sell. It just sells over time. And sometimes I'll log on and I'll be a billionaire richer because things sold overnight. Sometimes it won't be nothing for three days and then one day it's just boom, billionaires. So this is a different kind of way to approach the game. And when you play this way, you find yourself being more frugal uh, with your just erroneous spending and play style you you know so it, it works for me i'm not saying it gonna, it's gonna work for everybody but it does work for me and i put these items on the market and they they sell and the rigs most definitely like this there's none of these and people do fly this ship but the blueprints aren't there and it's more because most people aren't exploring and then most people aren't really building this and having it skilled into this play style and so most people aren't building this ship the Celestis 2 Covert Ops, for those who don't know, is a really scary ship for uh, hunting because it, it, it runs snubs up close and it can run real guns. It has really great, great tracking. Personally, I fly it. Most people don't fly it just because they don't like how it looks. We understand it's a Celestis. It's one of the ugliest ships to most people <laughs> in the game. But in terms of this raw ability to put out DPS and tank, it's one of the best ships in the game. Especially like when you're using the interdictor version, it's very, very tanky. It has some decent DPS ability. Um, the Celestis 2 Covert Ops is really good. It's uh, not the Bellicose, but the Bellicose is a kiter, easier to use, right? Um, the Celestis 2 Covert Ops is really good at hunting miners that are stacked with stabs because you can get right up under the target and you can have a crap ton of points. <laughs> and they just can't get away from you. So it's a really good ship to use. Um, but as you can see here on the market, it's two of them for 20 million. So will those sell? That's not the average, right? It's not the average. It'll get you. <laughs> so it's not the average. What I want to sell them for is a lot cheaper. So let's look at what they actually sold for before. See, they were a lot lower. So that guy's price is just there at 20 million because there was nothing there before he posted those. That's what it actually sold for last so do it am i gonna go below him yeah sure sure 20 million is ridiculous he knew it when he posted it i know it he knows it everyone knows it so um the average market price see there it is that's the average that's what it sold for recently so i'm gonna do i'm gonna make some isk but i'm not gonna rob anybody for celestis 2 blueprint right uh, i'm gonna do this nothing crazy but certainly higher than the average right there it is but most definitely <laughs> lower than you know 20 million for a blueprint you know now blueprints that are worth that kind of is or close to it right uh for some reason the dominics and the dominics too has been selling for like something something nuts see those are eight and higher and then I've seen Dominic's 2s going for, you know, 12 or higher. So I'm thinking, you know, that's your ratters. That's your high set guys. Uh, they're getting Dominic's. They're using drones. Um, and they're they're ratting in high set. And it's a good ratter. Um, even in low sec, it's a good ratter. Because if you're a tackle pilot, you know how dangerous Dominic's can be. Um, with those fast drones. And there's just the shredding damage. And so those, those Dominic's survive. And they're tanky. It's all out craziness, so they can definitely survive quite a few. It takes a crew to tackle those things. You're not doing that. You're not doing that by yourself and just to kill it. You're not doing that by yourself. Dominix is a very brutal ship. Um, we'd see more of them probably in fleet combat if it wasn't for the fact that they're just going to lag everybody out and the drone bombs now exist. So, but we still see quite a few of them, just for different applications and you know small gang stuff. But they're good ships. Um, so. Uh, this video is dragging on longer than I wanted to be. I think I covered some of the things that I wanted to cover. 
and I'll try to make more where we talk about stuff like this, um, because it's not really talked about a whole lot, but this part, aspect of the game does exist. If, to be honest, if insurance didn't exist, or if insurance was better formulated more for the player and less for that he's trying to rob us, these would be a lot higher in price and more frequent would you see players trying to make them and sell them because you would absolutely need them. Um, with exploration as well, I, uh, I do mining, NCS space mining, because it's just a lot of them. If you're into that, you know, venture stuff, if you're into um, using smaller ships to get around, and, and I do it in NullSec, it's super dangerous. Um, still, fingers crossed for the Venture 4 actually getting an update and getting a Covops capabilities, because that would be awesome for getting around in NullSec. Um, but you can also do it in uh, low sec as well because NCS spaces exist in low sec and you can do a lot of that. So then you can do some decent mission running. Small small ships are actually good for that play style. If I just need ISK, there's nothing to get like a destroyer or a cruiser and do like low sec encounter running missions. And, um, <laughs> and I can gank with the same ships I run the mission with most of the time. Um, and they're really great at getting away as well, especially destroyers. Like if you're running... Missions with a destroyer, the destroyer can absolutely do them. And Virtual PG, he has a couple videos up of destroyers recently. Please go check those out. Those are awesome. I hope he does more of them. Um, but you can do low sec encounter running missions, or just low sec missions in general. You can do a lot of that stuff with destroyers. And it's very hard to land on and catch a destroyer. And if you do land on it and catch it in like an interceptor or some kind of faction frigate, you're probably not going to have a good time. Because they can kill you. And that's the difference about with, with, when in the 1v1 scenario when in Destroyer, they can absolutely kill you in a frigate. Um, <laughs> fairly quickly. <laughs> so um, they're good for that. Um, you can use cruisers for it. Cruisers take a little bit longer to warp prep and get away from stuff, but Destroyers can definitely do that job. And so you can make it that way if you're just hurting for ISK. Um, it, it isn't big ship riding ISK. But if you're not into those ships, then you can make some decent ways to pay for your smaller ships all day long. Um, I also haul in haulers, 554 and in industrial ships. And I use Kovops haulers. Rarely get caught. Haul stuff all over the place. Fill orders, make ISK, uh, move ships, stuff like that. Move materials all the time. Um, and so it just, it's just a different play style. And it's a different way of making ISK. And uh, if you're into this, if you're into exploration, if you're into doing small ship stuff, then, you know, this this can be a lot of fun, I should say. It's just different. It's, it's different from the mandatory eight hours of ratting to get, you know, the largest ships, the ISK for the pay for the largest ships, and then now you need a second because rule number one of Eve is, you know, if you can't, if you can't afford it, don't fly it. And rule number two is, is <laughs> two is one and one is none. So you need more than one of those ships, right? Uh, that's my rule anyway. If so, if I got a Nereus two, I need to get another Nereus two. If I got a Procura, I need to get another Procura. I need to have three Procuras and I need to have three locations for everything. And once you get into that kind of secure gameplay. You don't find yourself in some of the situations I've seen other players find themselves in where they have one of something and they lose it and then it's just an absolute catastrophic loss. Loss will happen. Loss will happen, but it's less of a loss and you can manage your gameplay better if you have more than one of something. Having one ratting cap and then putting it out in the field is a mistake. I don't care what anybody tells you. I really don't. And I try to warn players about this. And they rant and rave on, you know, Reddit and other stuff about, you know, how I'm crazy and this, that, and the other. But listen, one, two is one, but one is none. If you have one red in capital, leave it docked up. I can't stress that enough. And that's just objectively, that's just, that's just the truth. Take it out there if you want to, and you'll get away with it for a little bit. But there are way too many players hunting you to get away with it forever need to build another one yeah, you need to do that with a battleship ratting and then when you have two you take one out and you take all the precautions you 
get in fleet and you get guys to help you out and you make it with it you turn it into an asset and after a while of doing those practices this stuff will pay for itself and that's at every level whether you're in a frigate or a capital ship if you play that way and you play smart yeah you'll lose some stuff but your losses won't be nearly as bad um but this video is now 25 minutes long Oof. I know you guys love chatting with me, <laughs> so uh, leave a like, uh, as they say, subscribe if you haven't already, um, put some words in the comments, uh, let me know, I'll post it on Discord and Reddit or whatever, and we can debate and talk about this stuff, some some players, hopefully this helps some players get into something that makes some is that they don't have to, you know, necessarily be stuck in the grind of ratting all the time, because I just can't do it. But, alright guys, uh, stay safe, fly aggressive.